Kansas State 48, number five, Oklahoma 41. The score I'm sure you all expected to hear on this edition of the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek Young joins me. I'm Matt Hall of Case It Online. Derek, the Wildcats earn easily the biggest win of the Chris Kleiman era and one of the biggest wins in program history as they knock off number five, Oklahoma, like I said, 48-41. At one point, this was 48-23. Just general thoughts on this win before we get into drive-by-drive drive in this game. I'd hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Just kidding. I did not pick a win, win today. But before we get into drive-by-drive, drive, you just got to like the heart that they showed at first in the first half. Uh, there was certainly points where they could have kind of folded up and because, you know, OU's got the train rolling down the track. Go up 10 nothing, I believe, even right. at one point. But they kind of just hung in there, got the running game going finally for the first time what seems like a month. Every time they've run the ball well, they've won. So that's one of the, the key factors going into the season. Derek's right. It was 10 nothing at one point, 17-7 at one point. You'll see highlights from Grant Flanders behind us as we talk through drive-by-drive drive now. K-State's win over Oklahoma. We've kind of spoiled the first bit a little bit, of course. The Sooners do score first, but it is a 44-yard field goal, Derek. A couple of times they settle for field goals today. Five plays, 40 yards, just a minute 39 off the clock. The Sooners are up 3 nothing. I'll go one more drive, then bring you in, because uh, it's another Oklahoma scoring drive. Jalen Hurts, a 10-yard touchdown run. That was five plays, 75 yards, 70 coming on a double pass trick play. The Sooners needed to get down there in scoring range. And with 2.03 in the first half at this point, Derek, it is 10 nothing Sooners. Yeah, and it was surprising, and not that I'm necessarily judging the play call by, by any stretch, but surprising to see Oklahoma jump out at the gates with the trick play on their second possession yep. of the game. But perhaps Lincoln Riley knew something we didn't, and that it was going to be a close game, and that they were going to at least have fits at times in the game to move the ball. So that was a big play for them that gave them their, their first touchdown of the game on the first drive. Not to keep bagging on Lincoln Riley, it'll be the first time of two instances where I really question uh, why they didn't go for it on fourth right. down. It was a certainly a manageable situation. You have an offense that averages 10 yards a play coming into the game, so uh, just a little bit shocking that he went for a field goal. I, I feel the same. The second one later especially, we'll get to that for sure and talk about it. I misspoke. There wasn't 203 left in the first quarter. The drive took 203. There was still 921 left in the first quarter, and Oklahoma led 10 nothing. K-State, Derek, does answer, though, with a 10-play, 88-yard drive that took 507 off the clock. Skylar Thompson, a four-yard touchdown run. Another spoiler, that was the first of four touchdowns for Skylar Thompson. How vital was this touchdown drive to keep in this game and not fall down by more than two scores right away to Oklahoma? Because if it gets down beyond two scores, it's really hard to, I guess, stay invested in that game or at least put your best foot forward knowing you know, what's, you know, the possible ramifications of being behind three scores. It's, it's hard enough being ahead of Oklahoma by three scores, as you'll right. see later in the game. So just big. And I'll just, again, hats off to Courtney Messingham of another brilliantly called game, I thought and especially just the way they are timing out the Skylar Thompson design runs at this point. No doubt about it. I'll break for a second and talk about K-State's offense in general, Derek, with you. Courtney Messingham, as you said, called a great game. The Wildcats run for 213. They throw for 213. 426 yards of total offense. Five rushing touchdowns from K-State today, I believe, as a, as a whole. So how important was it for K-State to get the ground game going, not just in general, but against one of the best teams in all of college football? It was, a, it was very critical, as I said earlier. When they run the ball, each and every game that they've ran the ball well in, they've won. They didn't run it well against Oklahoma State and Baylor. They didn't win those games. So I think it's just one of those you know, big critical points and factors going in for Kansas State because they're also able to pass the ball. I think they have to run to set up the pass. That's how this offense is designed. I think the personnel probably dictates that be the direction going forward. No doubt about it. Now, Oklahoma, to their credit, certainly doesn't go away. Just two minutes and one second later, they go six plays, 72 yards. Jalen Hurts, his second touchdown run from seven yards out is now 17-7 Oklahoma with 158 still left in the first quarter. We'll get to K-State's answer here in a second, but I'm curious how you're feeling watching this game. I'll just be totally honest. I thought K-State was going to lose this game by three or four touchdowns, and I thought when it was 17-7, that's where we were heading, Derek. Yeah, because I didn't – I guess I was probably feeling similar, but just because I didn't know if Kansas State would ever have an answer for Oklahoma's offense at that point, which makes the fourth down decisions by Lincoln Riley all the more puzzling. Jalen Hurts, you know, really got his own running game going in that drive, and the fact that – I don't really remember until maybe later in the game. Jalen Hurts having a run by less than five yards. Some of these fourth and shorts, it's like just run Jalen Hurts. So right. It just seems like an easy thing to do. It's crazy. Jalen Hurts is a guy who I feel like K-State did a good job on today. You look at his line, Still 19 got carries, loose. <laughs> 110 yards, 96 after sack yardage, but three touchdowns, 19 to 26 for 395, one touchdown, no picks. So he was, you know, fantastic statistically, but it wasn't enough today. K-State answers Derek uh, with another touchdown drive. This one, a four-yarder from Joshua Youngblood on a jet sweep. Again, they fall down 10 points. 
They have another 10 plus play drive that goes 70 yards, four minutes and 40 seconds. And with 12 12 left in the second quarter after the Youngblood run, it is now 17 14 OU ahead of K State. Yeah, Kansas State still hasn't had a lead yet at this point. Uh, Joshua Youngblood's first career touchdown for him. So a big moment for the Wildcats and for Youngblood himself. And just that drive, that play in particular, it, you could just tell it, that it was starting to get to the point where Messingham was not just one step ahead of Alex Grinch, he was two or three steps ahead of him. And credit to Messingham recognizing. Uh, probably easier said than done for offensive coordinators, but Oklahoma was just going to be aggressive throughout the day. They were going to send more than four. They they rarely sent, uh, did not send a right. an extra a pass rusher, so they were just coming after it, and they had to answer for it. So at this point, it's 17-14 K-State. Oklahoma does answer with the field goal we talked about earlier, a 25-yarder. I don't remember the exact down in distance, but I think it was just fourth and two or three perhaps for the Sooners with a chance to get in and get a touchdown to put them back up by two scores. They don't. Uh, as we've talked about, it's 20-14 to 14, Oklahoma at that point. Now K-State comes back, Derek, with an 11-play, 46-yard drive that took 5.50 off the clock again. It ends in a Blake Lynch field goal to make it 20-17 to 17 with still 122 left in the first half. Yeah, and I thought the field goal was the right decision. And if I'm remembering, yep. uh, there was a fourth and one they might have had, but they had to go back. Uh, I think they got penalized or just didn't get the uh, didn't get the catch that they thought they might have. So it was fourth and six. Fourth and six, you do kick the field goal. But had they caught the ball, I think it was a tight Samuel Wheeler. Uh, it was, yeah, Wheeler, I believe. Yeah. yeah, had they catch that, then I'm thinking, you know, maybe you go for it in that fourth and one situation. I think the field goal is the right call, and you think you're going in halftime down three. To me, you know, there's a lot of things that turn this game. We could talk about 100 different plays. To me, this next sequence is really when this game changed from a game that K-State could hang around in to a game K-State could win. Because we're all sitting up there talking, right? We're all sitting up there talking in the press box. Uh, there's 122 left in the first half. Every one of us thinks that Oklahoma go down the field in 81 seconds and score. Well, uh, the fumble's coming soon. This is actually when they try the... I believe it. They tried the, re the reverse, the second reverse pass of the day. Um, they have multiple receivers wide open on this. They have Daquan Patton running away from the ball carrier. Oklahoma just decides to force it in any way. Gets tipped by a wide open receiver for interception. AJ Parker returns it. I think down to Oklahoma's 14, or at least close. A few plays later, just three plays later, Skylar Thompson scores from 14 yards out to make it 24 to 20 K State, and everything is flipped at this point. Yeah, credit to K State's defense; they took the go route right away on that trick play. They were burnt That's by the true. trick play yep. in the first quarter. Denzel Goolsby takes takes care of the receiver over the top a receiver that typically doesn't play quarterback. Does it? make the right decision there could have ran once Daquan Patton turned his back to him instead he throws across the body still a drop probably by the receiver right. the other receiver should have caught the ball but A.J. Parker uh, takes advantage of the situation Oklahoma does respond that offense again is very very dangerous they just need three plays to go 27 yards after a good kickoff return it took 16 seconds they did kick another field goal the right decision there as the clock yep. was running out but they're down 24 23 at halftime let's jump straight to the third quarter Derek K-State gets the ball first. They go nine plays, 44 yards, take 3.52 off the clock. It's another field goal. I think it's the last field goal for K-State, though. A Blake Lynch kick to go up 27-23. I thought the field goal was the right call in that Same. sequence as well. Uh, no, Actually, I don't have much coaching decisions really to second guess. It's, it's not something we typically do, obviously, anyways, but it just seemed like they made the right calls throughout the day. They were aggressive. They played the win. That's what you have to do. Uh, and then you'll we'll go flip to the defense. I know you're about to, but just a stat that I think is just marvelous for Kansas State. In the third quarter, Oklahoma didn't get one first down. They ran six plays for seven yards. It was funny because <laughs> – as you were saying that, I'm looking at this sheet, you know, of all the scoring plays and think, man, I'm not talking about the defense on here because by definition, usually we're talking about scoring plays. But the third quarter of defense for K-State, I mean, you can't you can't play any better than no. they did. And it's why they went on such a big run because, Derek, you talked about, you know, that defensive stop throughout those quarters. K-State scores two more touchdowns in the third quarter and another one early in the fourth quarter as well. They're both Skylar Thompson three-yard touchdown runs. They're both four-play drives. One goes 46 yards, one goes 25 after the fumble you referenced. Both take less than two minutes. Very similar. And all of a sudden, after those two runs, Derek, it's 41-23 K-State. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, I think that's 24 unanswered points at that point by Kansas State. And not only is the defense clicking all in all cylinders, Skylar Thompson all of a sudden gets in a big rhythm with Courtney Messingham as the play caller. He made some unreal throws. I think it, they were all in the third quarter where yep. we were just raving about, including one where he just dropped it in a bucket to Samuel Wheeler. I think it was on third down. Yep and right at the three-yard line. He had a few. There's another one to Dalton Schoen where he was rolling to his right. Skylar Thompson was and lofted it from the 50. As Schoen caught it, I think, at the 18. And the ball was just hit so perfectly right. in stride. He had a number of throws that were really, really impressive. And that, and that throw kind of reminded me of the, the game-winning touchdown throw in Starkville. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the thing about Skylar Thompson in this game, too, that's funny to me is we're sitting up there in the third quarter. You might know what I'm going to say. And you're, Skylar Thompson famously, 213 yards was his, his career record forever after the Oklahoma State game. I think it bumped to 218 against Baylor. He had 213 late in the third. You turn to me and say, well, he's going to break that record. Skylar Thompson, 18 of 28 <laughs> for 213 yards today. He did carry 13 times for 39 yards and four touchdowns. So he was very, very good today, but he cannot break that number. Yeah, yeah. It's still, 218 is still the record. D-Y. Zero passing yards in the fourth quarter, but they were just taking that clock. Absolutely, and it worked out, of course. So one more touchdown for K-State comes with 12.54 left in the fourth quarter. James Gilbert from two yards out. It was a 10-play, 73-yard drive that took 5.41. K-State is up 48-23. to And this is a chance, D.Y., to talk, too, about the running game specifically. James Gilbert, 13 carries, 105 yards and a touchdown. Jordan Brown, 12 carries, 63 yards. We talked about Skylar Thompson. Harry Trotter had a couple of key runs. I mean, considering the opponent, it's got to be the best K-State's running game has been this year, wouldn't yeah, you say? Yeah, I would consider it the best, and they, and they got it from you know multiple avenues. Not only Skylar Thompson and all of his were just so well-timed and well-designed, but uh, it was great to get Jordan Brown back. James Gilbert, he was his normal self, really. Uh, he always gets more yards than what the play is blocked for. Great to have Jordan Brown back. Hope that both he and Gilbert are healthy going into KU next week. They were both probably a little gimpy by the yeah, end of the today. I think so. We were sitting in the press box as K-State's up 48-23 with under 13 minutes left in this game, trying to almost do the math. As to if Oklahoma could realistically, if everything went their way, come back and win this one, it would have been very tight. But they got awfully close to doing so. It was a one-play drive. The first time that C.D. Lamb really got freed up, he went 70 yards for a score from Jalen Hurts, made it 48-30 to with 12-32 left. I'll get one more, then I want to talk about what your thoughts are, D.Y. Next drive after another great uh, Devin Enkel punt. He was fantastic again today. Oklahoma still goes 90 yards in 10 plays and just 325. At this point, D. White is 48-38 with 536 still left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, this game gets too close for comfort. Makes a lot of people nervous, I'm sure, in Manhattan and the all of Kansas. But I thought the only reason why it did get close, I thought the one play touchdown drive from C.D. Right. Lamb really opened it up and I guess gave the Sooners the opening they needed. I agree. That really changed everything. I mean, it happened in case state still won the game in case they should be thrilled but yeah i think if that one play doesn't happen if that's even a five play touchdown drive this one probably never feels as nerve-wracking as it does one more oklahoma field goal late this one i think is the right call i think when you're down 10 and it's fourth down you got to get it to a seven point game give yourself a chance they do make it their kicker was fantastic today 48 41 is the score at that point of course then we have an onside kick that's i mean controversial is probably the right word for it i haven't i know what oklahoma's upset about is they believe that a player, their player was blocked into the ball, which wouldn't be an instance where they could they could touch it with 14 yards if that was to happen. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. Either way, D.Y., they overturn it. They originally give Oklahoma the football, overturn it, give it back to K-State. The Wildcats can take three knees to win 48-41. Yeah, it sounded like the replay officials told the, the officials on the field who relayed it to Lincoln Riley that the explanation given was that they didn't feel like, I guess it's a judgment call, and they didn't feel like the blocker was that engaged to uh make it so that the, the they didn't get overturned. So good, good for K-State on that. Uh, it gets real tight, but that onside kick, I'm not going to say they lucked out. I think it was the right call at the end of the day. Yeah, Chris Kleiman said it maybe it was a break after the game. Maybe it wasn't, but Chris Kleiman believed his team played better today and deserved to win. That's what K-State did. 48-41 K-State. Derek and I will come back here in a couple segments after you hear from Chris Kleiman in segment two of the KSO Sunday show presented by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. What's the feeling after this right now? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling great, but um, I'm just glad we won, man. It came down to the end, seven-point game, but I'm glad we won, man. Great win for the team. So, At the top of your head, where does this rank as far oh, as it's accomplishments? Number one. Yeah, number one accomplishment for sure. Um, you know, we've been in. You know, I've, I've I've played a lot of games here. You know, I'm going in my you know fifth year. Um, I've, I've started a lot of games here, and I can't think of any game that was bigger than that. Mm-hmm. That ended. You know, I think, you know, the Texas Bowl, winning yeah. that was, was an amazing game. Uh, Cactus Bowl was fun, but beating, beating number five Oklahoma, a team that I've never beat in my career here, um, at home in front of our fan base was, was, a, was a feeling that, that I'll never forget. How do you, what statement do you think you guys made today? Yeah, I think we made a big statement. I mean, I don't think a lot of people thought we was going to win today or even compete or not even do what we did today, but at, at the same time, I like how we played today. Offense got it rolling, defense played. I mean, we had a couple mistakes here and there, 
but I feel like we did a good job today. Both sides of the ball and on special teams. So. You know, I don't really think Oklahoma thought this was going to be a close game at right. all. Uh, you know, they're undefeated coming in this game. You know, it's OU. They have that ego about them. And, uh, you know, that's something that will get you hurt. You know, yep. big ego is definitely something that you don't want on your side. And uh, being humble and uh, just something that they don't have. You know, credit to them. They're a great football team. But, uh, you know, you can't just wander into to a, you know, a town like Manhattan into right. a program like K-State and just expect to win. So, you know, we were just glad we came out the hard one. It was like the second quarter, into the second quarter, I looked over to the bench and like mm -hmm. all the players' heads were down. Yeah. That's when the ball was in the wall. I was like, yeah, we got it. We got it. Yeah. So it was a great feeling. I don't think it really has fully hit me, to be honest. Um, I've just been a loss of words, honestly, kind of sit down there just yeah. um, at my locker, just kind of just thinking about what we just did and how we did it. It was just, uh, it's a special moment. Um, for me and, and my life, but I know for Kansas State and, and the history here, uh, go down to the game that people remember forever. And um, just the thought of me being a part of it, a small part of it, um, is is something I'm truly grateful for. You know, I had so much fun today. You know, I think that's the the um, the common denominator between you know everything from start to finish today is how much fun I had, how much fun this team had. Um, you know, they come out and go. Um, I think it started off 10 nothing. We started, had a three and out, you know, and everybody sitting there, there wasn't anybody ever flinching or doubting what we what we could do. Um, and we got stuff going on offense, run game wise, uh, and it opened up the passing game and we were just, we got in a rhythm. We got in a rhythm. I thought that was huge for us this week. Um, and just was, uh, it was it was awesome. I'm, I'm so thankful to, to just be here, be part of K-State, um, this football program, this university. Um, it means a lot to me, um, and I just know the the fans, the fans that we have are truly special. I mean, they were they were in there for four quarters and super loud um, and supportive, and they always, they've always been there for us through the highs and lows. Um, and I just really appreciate appreciate the fan base um, and the support that we get from everybody. You know, I just think that uh, K State is truly a special place, um, and if you didn't know that. All you gotta do is is go back and, and watch today's game, and you can figure that out. I mean, this place is truly special for for more ways than one. So I'm just thankful to be here and thankful to be part of this team. You're watching segment two of the KSO Sunday Show, brought to you by Legacy Insurance and People State Bank. That was just the locker room and some of the players from Kansas State reacting to a massive upset over the Oklahoma Sooners on the Saturday afternoon. Up next. Check out what Chris Kleiman had to say following the victory. Well, what can you say about the resolve uh, of, of our guys? And i um, so proud of, of the players and, and the coaches. Um, we told them before the game uh, we belonged on this stage and uh, told them to continue to believe. We in the locker room knew uh, we were continuing to get better. Um, and, and does it show up always on Saturday? No. But when it would click, we thought we had a really good football team. And uh, the guys just continued to believe uh, throughout the game, even when we we were down 10 to nothing and down 17 to seven. Um, I saw a sideline uh, of guys that uh, uh, really felt that they uh, had a chance to win the football game and stay in the football game against a great, great football team. I, I, that's a, that's a, a, without question a top five team to me. Uh, and we were down 17-7 and offensively, we were uh, cracking and winning the line of scrimmage. And, and that was the belief that our guys needed to say, you know what, we're, we're gonna do some good things if we're winning the line of scrimmage. And can't say enough about uh, uh, everybody, you know, from the Skyler and the offense and the offensive line, how they played to defensively. Uh, we tackled exceptionally well. Uh, missed one thing on C.D. Lamb where he made a few guys miss and scored. And then on special teams, we were big as well. Uh, great program win. Um, most happy for the players. Most happy for the players. They they earned it. And, and we have to build off it. That's the thing we finished up in there. Uh, we had a, an opportunity to be successful because of our preparation. We attacked the process on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, and we said, I don't care what the score is. Um, you just detail every play and give yourself an opportunity, and, and they sure did that. So uh, really, really, really happy for the guys. You guys entered as a 23 and a half point underdog, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure you've never been a 23 point underdog in your coaching career. Just what is the feeling about this, putting uh, the college football world on its ear today? Uh, I don't. I, I don't have any idea on on the lines and spreads. Thank God. Um, but it was. Yeah. I mean, it was a statement for our guys. And, and you get a chance to play at home. And I told the seniors before the game, how many more opportunities are you going to have? 
to play in front of this great fan base, to play in front of, of your home crowd. And it was a phenomenal crowd. And they stayed in it uh, for the full 60. And uh, so just once again, uh, credit to those players. Um, obviously, Eric Gallon went out with an injury. Yeah. He had a, a big play on his own. Blitz, we dropped back and broke for pass, and then may cause a fumble in the kickoff return. I guess how is he doing, and how big were those plays? Yeah, great, and I, I'm sick for for EG um, because he this was his first opportunity, really, where we were going to give him significant snaps. And you're right, he made a big play, knocking a slant ball away. I didn't see what happened if he stripped the ball out on the kickoff. When I went to the sideline, a couple of the OU guys said, "Coach, it it didn't look good." And so uh, my prayers are out to him. We said a prayer for him in the locker room, and. Um, yeah, I feel sick for a kid that's a fifth-year senior. What's going through your head during that review of the onside kick? Um, you know, all those plays are reviewable. I, I know that. I didn't get an explanation because were, it was kind of mayhem after after they an announced it. But from the vantage point that we had, we thought it was touched um, uh, before 10 yards. And, and um, you know, you, you, catch a, you catch a break a little bit. But you know what? Um, uh, our guys deserve to win that game. I'll, I'll say that. And that would have been a sick feeling had they gotten the ball back. And who knows what would have happened. But uh, I thought we played better. And I thought we should have won. What to you was the biggest difference in the offense today to be so <clears throat> Just rhythm, you know? getting into a rhythm offensively and, and being able to run the football with our power game inside. Um, we were able to hit some perimeter run. I think it was big for us to have Jordan Brown back. Um, it, it gave us back that three back set with, with some older guys with Jordan James and Harry. So that, that helped us. And, and I thought Skyler was on point. You know, he just was on point. He saw pressure uh, and delivered the football. Uh, and, you know, against a, a really uh, dominant defense. We didn't turn the football over, I don't believe, and that's obvious, obviously a big thing. What does the offense do best to keep its cool when they are staring at a 10-0 deficit early? Uh, don't look at the scoreboard, to be honest with you, and just keep keep grinding it. And uh, we felt we had some good plays. We just hadn't gotten to them yet. And uh, um, obviously, uh, so happy for Coach Mess um, because I thought he had him really off balance. Coach, what changed about the running game? How come it opened up so much today? Couldn't tell you, other than we're continuing to work on it. You know, I, that, we're six games into this. Now we're seven games into it. We're just continuing to work on it and try to get better on a daily basis. And, and um, you know, for whatever reason, the old line took it upon themselves and, and, and played much better. We were able to cut guys on the perimeter. In the past weeks, we hadn't done that as well uh, with some of our three-back stuff. And, and being able to cut guys down, I think uh, all those things. Plus, let's be honest, when you have some success, all of a sudden you get some life, you get some belief. And, uh, you know, we got five seniors up front there that have a lot of pride. When, when you get that running game going, does it open up the playbook for Coach Messingham? Well, you're not in second and 13 and, and those things, and we were in manageable distance. We talked about staying on schedule uh, and not getting behind the sticks, and, and we were able to have some second and fives and second and fours. And, and then little things, you know, it, we condense everybody into the boundary, and they don't cover them, and we dump it out there and get seven, get six with YB and Dalton. Those are big plays. With so much that you could have focused on with their offense, what was the main thing you guys did for each on defense? Well, we, we – tried to give them some different looks. We played a little bit more Tampa, too. We played some too deep against them um, that we hadn't played all year. Uh, we played less of what we call our single high defense. Uh, we didn't pressure a whole bunch. I thought the D-line played really well. Uh, you're just not going to shut those guys down. You know, I kept looking at it and saying, okay, they're at 23 still because our offense is doing a great job. You're, you're counting possessions and points and those things because you know that they can score from anywhere on the field, and, and, and they showed that with C.D. Lamb's 70-yard, you know, pitch and catch. I mean, just they're never out of a game. What can you say about Skyler today? Um, you guys know how I feel about the kid. Um, I, I love his competitiveness. I love the kid. He's a he's a guy that that wants to be great, wants to be perfect. I thought that uh, you know he really stepped up in a leadership role today. Even when the defense was out there, he was always the guy in front on the sideline cheering those guys on. And uh, he's getting better and better within our system. How big time was it to come out the second half and outscore him seventeen and nothing in the third? 
Yeah, that was that was huge. Uh, we we had the ball back and, and moved it well and got a field goal, and then we were able to get some stops. You know, the the stops we had and the field goals that we held them to were really the difference in the game. That I mean, when those guys are moving the football and we're holding them to three, guys, that's a friggin' win. That's a big time win for us on defense. And then we were able to get a couple of couple of stops, and then you know the AJ Parker pick and to get points out of that was big as well. In what way does your process driven message? Really take hold in a ball game within the confines of a game when you're down by ten twice. Yeah, just just focus on on the next play. Focus on that that play. In, in when I say the process of, of doing your job, you just do your job. Even when when EG got hurt and there was kind of a delay, we just went right back to that thought process of you know attack this next play, attack the process within this play. You do your job. You've had a lot of success, obviously, um, not having letdowns after big wins like this in the past. What do you do going forward to this week? You enjoy the heck out of this one, and we'll worry about it on Monday. <laughs> what does Jordan Brown's uh, return give you in terms of the perimeter play? And the perimeter? Well, and he was nicked up again. I'll have to find out, but he was able to kind of come in and out. Um, just he's got tremendous speed. He's a tremendous receiver out of the backfield. Obviously, on the one uh, sideline ball that he caught, uh, it was a great throw and catch. Um, but it just gives us another uh, another weapon and a, and a fifth year senior, an older or fourth year senior, an older guy uh, that's been in uh, a lot of battles before. You, you mentioned the AJ Parker pick a minute ago, but just how big was that play in terms of getting it and the fact that you got one on the score and take the lead going into half? It was it was really big, um, you know, because it, you're always on your heels with those guys, and and that's the thing. You you want to play aggressive, but they have so many trick plays and so many different variations, and and we saw that they had a couple of trick plays on us, and then we play soft and they hit a, an under route, and then they're hard to tackle, and um, so you know we talked about being able to create a, a huge turnover to change the momentum. Well, we were able to create two, one of them on teams, uh, and and with AJ's, and we and we said we had to win the special teams battle. We had to find a way to get an explosive play, whether that was a return or a turnover. And to follow up to that, did you just see either right after it happened or at least during the week just how much this game meant to him being an Oklahoma guy? And you mentioned how much it means to play against the I'm sure it did all of our, our Oklahoma guys to have that opportunity. Um, but, you know, it, I, I think that they're more excited about uh, playing with their brothers that they have in the locker room. You guys are 5-2 and two now. How, how much better do you feel like this team has been able to get week to week so far? Well, it is. And it, it, we're better, obviously. I think that's, that's a proven point. Mm -hmm. But in the same respect, you can throw out whatever we did last week, and we can throw out whatever we did this week once we get to Monday. And don't let any scores of games or anything like that um, get into your mind because come Monday, we have to you know, attack our preparation Monday through Friday to give us a chance on Saturday. What is it about Skyler or the offense as a whole that has turned him into such a good goal line rusher in these last few months? Putting it in his hands more. You know, uh, of making a conscious effort to say, let's get him the football more. You know, we, we've worked on the option, uh, just haven't had a great chance to use it. Uh, and then some of the Q power stuff, uh, it's stuff we did at, at my previous school a lot with quarterbacks we had. And, and for us in the red zone, we have to have that 11th man, you know, that quarterback that can make those plays. Anything else? Just a comment on Jalen Hurts and. Play yeah. Um, yeah, we weren't really able to contain the kid. Uh, great, great player, uh, great competitor, um, and uh, can't say enough positive things about uh, the Oklahoma football team. That was a great football team that we beat. That is going to uh, win an awful lot of games, and it's uh, he's a uh, he's awesome. He's you know just great, great, great player. You know, the biggest statement I think is you know Coach Kleiman. You know, he's put himself on the map. You know, and uh, everyone everyone wanted to say so many things about him coming from SAS program and uh, transitioning to FBS. And uh, you know, me and the players, you know, had so much pride in him. We we knew, you know, all that talk was not didn't mean anything at all. And uh, you know, I just think this way, you know, definitely, you know, it's, uh, I give all credit to Coach Kleiman what he's done. And uh, I just think this puts him on the map as a serious coach in Division One football. Is this the game you've been waiting for for the offense to click and get it going? Yeah, yeah. I mean, surely. I mean, it's it's a game that we needed for sure to get some confidence going against a good football team. I mean, their defense was was um, yeah, I think giving up like 18 points a game, and 
but we scored 41, 48 today, almost 50, put 50 points on them. So it's like, uh, it kind of shows what, what we're capable of doing. The thing is we can't just get complacent or get satisfied with what, what we did today and got to build off of it. How, how special was it to see the fans rushing the field after you guys touched the line? It was great. It just shows we have the greatest fan, fan base across the country. Um, they were loud today. You know, it was crazy having them out there. So I'm appreciative of them coming out and supporting us. I don't think I've ever been no use since I've been here. So this is this a first one for me. So I'm going to take it in and cherish it for the moment now and then get back to work next week, Monday. So I think this team, where we're at, is we're, we're, we're ready to go beat KU. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I know right. you don't want it, you know, week, week by week. That's what we always say, but we say it because it's true. Right. You know, uh, we're going we're gonna to celebrate tonight. You know, we're going to enjoy this win and then we're going to recover tomorrow. And then come Monday, it's. It's KU time. It's, it's game time. We definitely shocked the whole nation. You know, yeah. Recruits are going to take notice of this. You know, we got something special. So hopefully, all the 2020 guys looking at this, like, come here. We got something special going. This is our third and final segment of this week's KSO Sunday Show, brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek, I want to talk big picture a little bit here after the Wildcats win to move to five and two. That's where I'll start. They're five and two now. This is a five and two team, two and two in the Big Twelve. A month ago, they were ranked in the top 25. Is this the team that possibly can jump back in the top 25 after beating number five Oklahoma here at home? Yeah, the upset and the magnitude of this win kind of makes us lose sight of the right. big picture. It's like, hey, we shocked the kids. They shocked Oklahoma. It's a big, crazy upset. But they're five and two. Uh, the five and two now, and they're probably back into the Big 12 picture. So you got to like your chances if you're Kansas State, especially when you got KU coming up. You a chance to go to six and two with, with another winnable game. So you have to like that. Do I think that game changes? I think it's still going to be a, quite a challenge in Lawrence. That's the next question I was coming to, is this is a game I think a lot of K-State fans had some nerves about because they understand how important it is to beat Kansas in the first year for both Chris Kleiman and Les Miles. How does this change it? Obviously, you feel good about K-State after winning this game, but does it make you feel much different about the challenge K-State will see in Lawrence next week? It doesn't make me feel much differently. They have to watch or be careful of a letdown after a monumental win like that. The Jayhawks are going to provide a, a very stiff challenge. They're playing good football right now, too. Right. They just beat Texas, or almost beat Texas a week ago. So I still think that's going to be a close game in Lawrence. The last thing I want to finish up with here on the KSO Sunday Show from inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium after K-State's 48-41 win over number five Oklahoma. Derek is recruiting just some general stuff. A number of kids here today. We ask you all the time, like, how do wins and losses impact recruiting? And you've taught us it's not all about, you know, just winning and losing the games the visitors are on. But still, what kind of environment was this today for those visitors? And what can we look for in the next four or five days for you on the site as far as recruiting goes? Yeah, that's a major significant win, and you'll probably feel that on the recruiting trail in terms of momentum and just more kids taking a look at Kansas State that may not have initially. And some guys that are maybe 50-50 and up in the air between Kansas State and another school, uh, the Wildcats will probably receive a boost from a type of win like that. And in terms of the kids that are actually on campus for it, sure, it's fun for them. It's excited. It'll probably mean very little to them in the long run and the big picture of things. It uh, just gives K-State, you know, a small boost here here and there for, for that. But going forward, we'll have, the, you know, the recaps, the official visitors, and just everything that uh, you would want to know on the recruiting trail in terms of what's uh, to come when they have West Virginia and Iowa State also coming later in the season. I selfishly look forward to reading it. That's going to wrap us up. I want to thank Logan Mance, Chris Nelson, Jimmy Goheen, Grant Flanders, Derek Young, and I guess me for the work K-State Online did this week. And again, K-State beats Oklahoma 48-41. This has been the KSO Sunday Show brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We wrap it up with one super simple request. Tell your friends.
The next home game for K State is on Saturday night. Nice, huh? <laughs> oh,